So hello and welcome to a new series of Ticker Points. Uh, I'm your host, Ronan Scott. The leagues have started, and this week I've asked Brian McFall, the former Antrim hurler, to come on to talk about uh, how Antrim have started the leagues. Shane Elliott joins us to talk about Ulster hurling. And Joe O'Keefe, our columnist, is here to talk about the uh, National Football League which started last weekend. So Brian, thanks for coming in. Um, I wanted to chat to you about um, Antrim's performance so far in the first two games of the league because it's because it seems to be that's the story so far in that it's been successful. And while it's been a shock or a surprise to some of us in Antrim, it hasn't been. So I want to know what you think of their first couple of performances. So last weekend uh, they played Kilkenny and it was a great performance. They didn't win, but I think the manner of the, the manner of the performance was very good. What did you take from it? I think the road have went down for, full of confidence from the game pre, the, the previous week, but you know they didn't they didn't they didn't start very well. But generally they kept coming in the game, just kept picking off points and stuff like that. But then they came out in the second half and whatever was said in the dressing room at half time and inspired them. They had two goals and four points to Kilkenny's two points. It was it brought it in their level. But you know it's probably a bit of acuteness from Kilkenny and a bit of you know a bit of experience sort of. Told them they just kept then opening that gap, and Adam were trying their best to close it off. But all in all, you know, people say you know that it could be a good performance because it was in seven points. But I think that the the manner with way Darren Gleeson has set that team up and installed belief in them, I think it would have been very disappointed. Yeah, yeah. Were you surprised at you know the performance the previous week whenever they beat Clare? Not as much because I've seen them pl play an in-house game like before in in Corrigan Park and. They were going hammer and tongs on it, but I knew with a smaller, tighter pitch getting clear up the West Belfast might have been you know, different. But the way that the, the way that they played last week, you know, they, they took it. They have Darren Gleeson has took it to another level. And that team has took it to another level, and you know, the, with the hits and the aggression that they brought, you know, probably clear didn't expect it. But Antrim, Antrim did play very well. They kept it in it and they got scores at crucial time. And I, I think, to be honest, they well deserved their win. It could have been more. They had two great opportunities for goals. I thought that maybe once they lost them, it could have been come back to hunt them. But no, they, they played very well. And, and there was two points in it in the end. It could have been six, seven, eight points. Antrim have been up at this level before, but what's the difference this time, you know, if you go on the basis of the performances have been better? I think Darren Gleeson has brought a lot of, of, of very much more professional setup to it. And got in regards to Brent and Murphy in from strength and condition, one of the best in the, in, in the business at it. And he has installed a belief into that team, which, you know, they came through last year undefeated, even regard it was, was a, a league down. But he's, he, he's installed that belief in the players, and they don't expect any less. And, you know, you can see it, it's traded out onto the field as well. But, you know, they definitely, a lot of people were saying, you know, after from last year, you know, what way is it going to be? I don't know if Rogi Cusack had a, a crack at them as well, but they've well held their own. And, you know, it, it's, it's been no surprise to me because the players that Darren Gleeson has out available, he has the best in the, the county, everybody's available. I think he went and he sold it to the players that, in regard to professionalism and stuff that he's brought in, you know, they've been treated very well and, you know, they're, 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 they're giving their best in the field. And, you can see the results. The yeah, yeah. I think perhaps maybe it's even just journalists like me, maybe who are surprised because from talking to players and talking to other players, you know, other players, and you know, the Limerick guys, and they were saying they are not surprised at how Antrim have performed. Yeah, that's as I'm saying that they have great players. You know, that the players that they have available. You know, you know, I've watched them in club games down through the years, and it's top class players. They haven't been about the Antrim setup years before when Antrim in Division One. You know they, maybe all the best players weren't available, but now the Darren Gleeson has, has has them all, as exposure, and you know that that level of professionalism that he's brought into it, the players have responded responded back very well, but they are they are going well and their confidence is up as well after that result last week. Even though that there has been a bit of the squad going on down in, in the Clare camp and whatever, it doesn't take it away from Antrim's great performance last week. There was no TJ Reid available for Kilkenny, but that 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 didn't really, you know, that wasn't much of a difference that I seen anyway. So really, then you could say that attitudes the difference. You know, the, the, you've seen them police players play well at club level. 
we all knew they were brilliant players, but they just weren't it playing in Division One. So yeah. it's the attitude that's changed. Oh yeah, the attitude. You, you can all tell that they want to be there, and you know they, they want to be the best. You know the, the, the best they can be, and they, they have that available to them. So they have to you know they have to make life choices themselves, and you know that's that's what they're doing. Their attitude has been first class, and you can see that in it. Um, and you know. That's the proof of the puns in Eden. You can, you can. That's the way they're performing at the minute. They're, 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 these lads are basically living like a professional lifestyle at the minute. You know, they're, you know, but well within the means. You know, they're training. They're, they're even, even though when they're not training with the county, they'll be in a gym or they'll be doing work on their own. And you can see that how, how far they, them players. I've seen, even the players involved with, with our club. You know how, how much even in a short period of time that there's been. I think we have seven on it, but there's. Three lads were brought on to it, and the condition that I've seen in them lads in, in this past even five to six months is is is, is staying out like. I was going to say, your managers and Johns, the, the what do you think of the players? You, I mean, the way they are playing, do you see them being different? The club players do you have who are on the county team are they different from what they were like whenever you were playing? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh they, no, listen, it, it's all it all comes down about your what you're putting in your body, the fuel and everything else that you're you're fueling your body with. The, the proper foods, hydration, everything along them lines, you know, dietitians and you know, nutritionists and everything that you're been told what to eat and the best, probably even the foods prepared for them. Whereas back in the, the, the days that we were we were playing, you know, that just wasn't like that. But you can see with the attitude that them lads even bring to the club, um, they were down even the, the, the county lads were involved. We were played a game last Wednesday night and they were training on their own. They were working on their own stick work. The, the six or seven lads were doing drills on their own. So it's 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 what you put out of it. You know they're putting a serious serious amount of commitment and effort into this thing. And yeah, I think everybody, I think they're all the same. And you can actually you can now you can, you can see it you can see it in front of your own eyes. You can see the the the, the, the performances that they're putting out there, and the training that they're doing is taking it to a different level. You got by on raw talent whenever you were playing then. Um, but uh, whenever you were saying that, I was thinking um, about how a manager is important because whenever you were playing, you, you, I think you told me one time that whenever the managers have brought you in, they gave you a lot of confidence because like, maybe you would have been overlooked whenever you, were, whenever you were a player. Yeah, well, and funny enough, a temporary man again, it was Danny Cahill came in to us in 2002 then. And, you know, he, we think sometimes we actually trained, I think it was the first time we, whatever Danny, Danny asked us, what to do, we done it. And it took us to different angles. Some, some nights we even trained five nights a week for the home. And it didn't, it didn't occur. We, we seen that, you know, we were improving. We were improving on the pitch. And I think we, we was that year we took the All-Iron Champions, it was killed temporary. We took them and right to the, you know, the, right to the wire, I think it was last time and they pulled away. But he had a belief into us that we were as good and you know, the come down there on a bend of knee to, to be beat was was we never believed that. We always believed that we were going to win. You know, we were on 2003. Then we were beat by a Waxford team, um, in the quarter finals. Again, again we should have we should have won. It was a game that we we got a goal disallowed and stuff like that. But he had a, a great belief in us, that, and and we believed in him. And anything that he told us to do, we you know we thought it was right. But we always went down with the belief that we we're, we're always going to beat these teams. And Darren Grayson has now has done it. With Andrew, you know, they. I would say even when years come past, like you would have been coming out out of Kilkenny with losing by seven points, and it would have been a victory. The people would have been, ah, oh, sure, you done all right. You came within ten points, but that mentality that he's brought in there now, it's 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 not there. I'd say they, he was very disappointed in yesterday's performance. They bought exp and I think these lads now are going down, and they're expecting to win. You know, just to go down and give a performance. Now is, is is just not good enough, and he's installed that belief in the players as well. So in general, we were uh, Antrim have proven that they are better than you know they're better than we thought outside of the camp, um, and they're doing great things for Ulster Hurling and Antrim Hurling, and we can only be positive then about what's what's next for them. Yeah, it, it's it's getting a good foundation in the league. You know, away to Dublin next Saturday, and then the two home games. You know, in Corrigan Park. I think it's it's uh, Waxford and Leash games that they'd be thinking going out now to win and have the confidence of winning. You know the confidence of getting Corrigan Park's a small like type pitch, so you're you're bringing a team uh, that you know you're sort of you're bringing a team up to a smaller field. You're getting into them. You know it it, it close it down for a bit, but I think you know if they have a good a good if they get another couple of results in the league and there's the confidence to say and you know 
they're, they'd be expecting to do that. And they're, they're giving the supporters and the people following them you know, great confidence that they will go and do that. So if they get another couple of wins in the league, then they have Dublin in the championship. You know, they're going in with their hump up. And I suppose you know, anything can happen then. It's a good run in the championship. They've Dublin and you know, I think I think they'll they'll be thinking there's no doubt you know there's no there's no problem here. We'll have we'll have a cut of these and so there's no they're not fearing Dublin at all. Dublin have they've kept talking at a different level over the last couple of years and Antrim are doing that now. So you know, I don't think we'll fear we'll not fear anybody in the championship. It's exciting then. Perhaps the only Downside is that we can't get more fans in because you yeah. imagine what Cargan Park would be like if yeah we're... it would have been we we got our our, our, our development um, finished we got the new stand and the terrace and stuff in and it would have been packed last week it would have been packed and, and we were commenting that sitting watching the game last week just just think of, of of what atmosphere could have been in here if Andrew would have won that game last week it would have been it would have been electric like but it's just unfortunate it is unfortunate it's the times we're living in but you know hopefully. That will change over the next couple of months, but it's only fingers crossed at this stage. We don't know. We're sort of governed by what Crow Park's laying out at the minute. I don't think that championship games, and I think even also football championship games this year, I think I don't think there's going to be any attendance. So you're just hoping we get a good run on the, the business side of it. We're still there. Yeah. One of the other um, perhaps negatives is the, the recent um, issue with uh, rules. Um, last week, and um, John Kelly was complaining about the... Um, Tackling or yeah. or the filing or the you know the too many calls by the referee. Yeah. Um, I wonder, have you noticed that, and what your take is on this on the? I watched the, the Limerick and Galway game, and I noticed that <clears throat> there was a lot of any any sort of tackling or anything up around here is just a no no now at the minute. Um, obviously, referees have been told by the powers that be in Croke Park that we will have to cut this out and. There's no no reason, you know. There's absolutely no need to touch the rules of hurling. There's absolutely no need, and they leave it as be that it was. But, but you know, there's been tweaks of Gaelic football trying this and trying that and everything else. Just leave hurling alone. There's no need for it. It's it's a manly game, and I'd seen what it is. And they try to they try to the, the rules. Obviously, the referees have been told this. They try to do anything like that. Is I just can't understand it for the love of me, like, but. I noticed that in that game yesterday, players were going to the ground very quickly, very easily. And the referees have, there's absolutely just no, the, the first thing you can, you can actually near call it before it happens, the referees are given. And there's, there's no need for it. I, I would say that he, he was unhappy, but you know, there's, there's, there's no need to change hurling. Just, just leave it be as it is. You know, referees should let it go. We, we, had, a, we had a club game last week, and one of the best um, referees that Antrim have available. Uh, the, the opposing team that we played scored two points in playing a hurling game. There was didn't seem to be any passes to play, and you know to just let the game flow. The, the rap, referees are been whistle happy, but the, they're only been told they're been sent out to do a job, and you know they're being assessed and and everything else. So you know they're only been told what to do. But I'm sure they know themselves really. You know just just leave the game be. How does that make you feel though that to uh, see that happening? You know in the game it's, you it's play, fr it's frustrating. I don't know if they're trying this out. In the league, and then come championship, it'll be it'll be wiped. Usually, that's that's what happens. But it, it would be frustrating. It's frustrating as a manager, you know, if there's no flow to the game, you know, and, and it's it's this process is very frustrating and annoying anybody watching the games as well. It's the same thing. Just just let it be. You know, there's there's no need to, to tweak or do anything with Harlan. Harlan's a manly sport, and to try to do anything like that is. It's just no sense at all. It feels odd because that's the opinion of everybody. That's the uh, everybody yeah. would sort of agree with that, I suppose. If you're hurling people and you played or managed or coached, you'd yeah. be saying, "Why did they brought this in?" Yeah, it's just I don't know. I don't know. It's 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 very very strange. I just can't understand. You know, as we talk about, there's been more rules in, in Gaelic football to try to the, the back passing and stuff like that. Even I watched the Cork and Tipperary game on Saturday, and the amount of back passing to the goalkeeper and the short passes, hand passes, and, and stuff. That's the way it's, it's went. It's, it seemed to be that game has been down an era of, of like Gaelic football. And, you know, Hurling was, it's, it's, it's not that way, but it's, it's, it's frustrating at times to watch. You know, it's annoying. But listen, the referees are, you know, they're out to, they're out to do a job. And, you know, obviously they must be told by the powers to be that this is the way it's to go. But we're just hoping that come in the summer months that it's, it's been. Hopefully, hopefully for the sake of yeah. Hurley. Oh, yeah, yeah, hopefully. Brian, appreciate that. Thank you for your time and thanks for coming on the show. No bother. That'll do. Thank you.
So moving on, I wanted to talk about the uh, Ulster hurling in general. We're two rounds into the league and Shane Elliott, Gaelic Life Commons, is in here just to give us his thoughts on where the teams are at. Shane, anything stand out so far in the first two rounds? Any, any teams in particular that you know have caught your eye? Bar Antrim, we're going to talk about Antrim in a moment. Yeah, you take the Antrim performance out of it. I think the, the, the one result that did catch my eye was Down's result against Carlo uh, at the weekend, uh, Ronan, which I thought was a great result. I think Ronan Sheehan will be dis delighted by that because Carlo, Carlo have been competing with Antrim in that sort of Joe McDonnell level for a number of years now and competing really, really well. And I've seen them on a few occasions and they've always been very strong and I've always been quite impressed by them. So that was a brilliant result for Down because they had a tough start. Down started with Kerry away in Tralee and then Carlo, so that's two of the top teams in that division they've started with. So the Kerry result would have been disappointing for them because at half time I think they were up a couple of points in that match, but seemed to capitulate a bit in the second half. Kerry got four goals and rolled them over. But so it was a great recovery from them to beat a team of the level of Carlo. And it shows that they're that they they really have come on and they have the ability to compete in that division. The other team, I suppose Derry will be Derry didn't have a game at the weekend, but their first game was against Mayo away. They'll be disappointed to have lost that one. I think they lost, well, there was only a couple of points in it at the end. But Dominic McKinley and Cormac Donnelly will have been targeting that as a must-win game to set them up for a promotion push. So they'll be very disappointed, I would imagine, that they get turned over by Mayo because Dominic, there's a lot of slack nail boys now playing in that Derry side. So you would have thought they would be strong enough for Mayo. So that wasn't a good start for them. So they'll be looking for a reaction. I think their next match is against Kildare away again tough that's a tough draw for them coming off the back of Mayo but it's a good game to come back to get a reaction so they'll be hoping for a bit more there and I see Michael McShane's tenure with Tyrone started at the weekend where they I suppose narrowly enough defeated Monaghan but Michael will be trying to put a stamp on that team um, and, and try to take them to another level but all in all I think the standout was down beating Carlo for me. Yeah moving on then to Antrim the, uh, they've two games so far um, I presume oh, well I'm just wondering how, how you feel about it what, just in general how you feel about the two games that Antrim have played I think you couldn't be anything but positive from an Antrim perspective in terms of how the games have shaped up um, if I'm being honest I was pleasantly surprised that they beat Clare I, I knew they would compete I knew Clare weren't coming up to Corrigan Park to walk over the top of them so I, I knew and I was confident in the fact they would compete I genuinely didn't expect them to win but the, that doesn't matter because they clearly did expect to win and, and Darren clearly has ingrained a sense of belief in the team that they believe that they're capable of competing at that level because I think we were all watching it and watching it at the time we're thinking maybe 10 minutes to go a couple of points in it we think ah, Claire's going to kick on here they're going to kick on we always had that sort of anxiety that there, there, there was going to be a point where, where Claire would move away but there's a resilience in the Antrim team now that I think that Darren has put into them and they have a real sense of belief. And I saw it again at the weekend against Kilkenny and I was lucky enough to be at the match where the, uh, there was a period, and it happened in the Clare match too, first 10-15 minutes Clare went 6 or 7 points up and you thought the game was going to go away. Kilkenny did the same, we're 7 or 8 points up at half time and you thought ah, they'll kick on here and we, we, we could end up with a, a, a hefty enough defeat. But Antrim dug in and they kept at it and they kept at it and they kept working, they kept doing the things and they kept moving the ball, they kept trying to do the right things. Like the first 10 minutes of the second half in the Kilkenny game, Antrim were exceptional, really, really good. They were using the ball well, they were working the ball out well, they were creating real problems for Kilkenny and their full back. You don't often see that with a Kilkenny team. You know, where Brian Cody was switching out his corner backs and his full backs, he was starting to panic because they drew level and you thought maybe Antrim will kick on. But I think I heard Darren's Gleason's interview after it and he said and I think he was right and been at that 10 minute period sucked a lot of the energy out of them it put a lot of energy to get back in the game and then that sort of poof, you sort of feel that they went a bit flat again and then Kilkenny kicked on but my overwhelming sense is that the, there's there's a resilience and more of a robustness about Antrim that they're fit to deal with going behind where previously you might have went behind, the belief would have been sucked out of you and teams would have kicked on. But the, 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 that's, uh, those first two matches would give you real cause for optimism. What do you think has been the difference, you know, if in previous years Antrim maybe would not have been expected to win those games, they would have put on a good performance? What's the, what's the difference this year? Clearly Darren Gleeson has that, you know, Darren, you have to give credit where it's due. 
it, it clearly has instilled that sense of belief and that comes a lot of that can come that clearly comes from confidence and I think the beauty going into this year that they produced a team that were used to winning like they had a very good year last year they hardly lost a match last year they were competing really well in McDonough they were beating teams like Westmeath quite convincingly and we saw Westmeath at the weekend were pushing Waterford very close so they're no bad team and we're beating them well in Corrigan Park so they developed a confidence on the back of the Joe McDonough winning that bit of silverware getting to the championship level getting to the division one level has instilled a sense of confidence and belief that maybe hasn't been there for a long time so they're going into games believing not only can we compete but we might actually beat these teams when we keep hanging on and at that level if you don't have that at that level then you'll be quickly found wanting so I think definitely that has been instilled in them my concern would be that the division one is tough going it's five games in six weeks and it's whether injuries will be inevitable and it's whether Antrim will have the strength and depth to keep competing at that level going forward. Now I think when I look at the panel you'd like to think that they, they have but that, that will be tested. You know Dublin will be a test, you have Wexford at home and then you have Leash um, and there's no gimmies there. You know even Leash who aren't going terribly well but would be tough. So that five games in six weeks will be a real test um, but the signs of the first two games are very, very positive. With the guards personnel, who has sort of stood out for you, or has anybody impressed in particular, or what have you thought of the squad in general? I've been very impressed by their defence, and you need to be good defensively. I've been very, very impressed by their work rate and the intensity that they're now bringing to games, which again, you need at this level. And on an individual basis, I think I've been very, Jared Walsh has been, Jared Walsh was, I thought he was exceptional at full back uh, against Kilkenny. Uh, against Adrian Mullen and he, he snuffed out a, a, a lot of threats so he's been impressive. Owen Campbell for me at right half back has been impressive. Paddy Burke's been doing a great job at centre half. Um, Kieran Clark corner forward had a great first half on, on, on Sunday against Kilkenny but really came into it in the second half when the ball delivery was a wee bit better. Other than that I think their half forward line Niall McKenna had an excellent game in the first game against Clare but he had a, a bereavement in his family leading into the Kilkenny match and you could see that told on him because he's a, a player who's full of energy. Uh, but you could see from the Clare what he can bring to the bring to the party. So there was dipping in and out, but those were probably the most consistent performers over the first two games. And finally, what what do you hope to see in the remaining games? What do they have to do in order to you know secure status? They need another victory out of the three matches they have left. So they need to beat Dublin Wexford or Leash, preferably all three, that would be a big ask. Um, but they need one victory out of that. So clearly everybody will be thinking, well, it's the Leash match that is critical. Leash have no points and the likelihood is they will have no points going into that match. Antrim will be sitting with the two points that they have from Clare. At the moment they're sitting with a vastly superior scoring difference because Leash got a bit of hockey and from Wexford in the first match. So it could come down to that match in terms of being a survival battle, for want of a better way of putting it. Darren will be hoping and, and Andrew will be hoping that and, and expecting to beat Dublin or, or, or Wexford, which will leave them comfortable going into that last game. But I suspect you could be looking at that last game as being the sort of fight for survival. And as things stand, Antrim would probably be favourites for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, Shane, that's great. Exciting times for Antrim Hurling. It's good to see. Thanks, Thanks. Ron. So let's move on to matters of football. Uh, the Football League started at the weekend and there was a number of big Ulster performances. So I've asked Jared O'Kane to come onto the show to talk about what he thought of each of the results. So Jared, thanks for coming on. To start, uh, Armagh beat Monaghan at the weekend and I wondered what you thought of that result. Obviously, it was Armagh's first time in Division 1 now, I think for nine years. So there's probably a bit more focus on them, whereas Monaghan are there now seven years. but. After one game, you have to say that Monaghan's probably under a bit of pressure now, given the transient nature of the league, that one defeat now will leave you facing downwards rather than upwards. I think it'll be a great relief for Armagh to head into, head into the Trung game this weekend with a one under their belts. I suppose when you look at uh, the two, whenever the two teams were named, you would probably look at Armagh and maybe thought them maybe as favourites for the game. Given the nature that Monaghan played a very inexperienced team, especially in their forward line, 
Uh, they looked to have rested a fair few players. And it maybe it wasn't until they brought them players on that they started to grab a foothold of the game. Now, uh, whether they were nursing injuries or whether because of the long layoff, the management are nursing their load. But you don't get much time in the National League this year to play your way into it. So I think the fact that Armagh came out four point victors that they'll be very pleased with that. I suppose a lot of the focus on Armagh themselves was on the people they had in the sideline as opposed to who they had in the pitch. Uh, Kieran McGinney has went with a completely new backroom team. He's brought in three Kearns and Kieran Donaghy, Kieran McKeever and Kieran McKinney, the keeper. So uh, there seemed to be a lot of focus on that to see would it change their style of play. Uh, would they be more defensive? Would they be working more as a unit up front? But I think it's too early to tell after one game if any of that's taken effect. The other big game in Division 1 for Ulster was the Trone Donegal match. Um, and there was a lot of hype about the Trone team. Um, Donegal ended up winning. Um, what, what did you think of Donegal performance and what did you take from the Trone performance as well? There was a lot of eyes on the Trone v Donegal game. Maybe more so because the management Trone have in place. It's the first time they have been without Mickey Hart for 18 years now. And I would imagine that a lot of the Trone supporters were interested to see, number one, what the team will be. Will there be many changes? Number two, how exactly they might line out. But I think it's probably a bit unfair in that you're looking for a wholesale changes within three or four weeks, given the fact that the new management has been working under restrictions. I think we did see a bit of change in policy in that there was less of a retreat into your own defence from Tyrone. They tried to strip Donegal off the ball higher up the field, putting pressure on Donegal in their own half, which we haven't really seen from Tyrone in the last few years. But outside of that, it was always going to be difficult for them to play against the Donegal side, who, even though they're under their third different management team, they've been playing the same brand of football for the last seven, eight, nine years. They know each other so well. Any personnel that has come in has just slipped in seamlessly. So I think from that regard that Donegal have been better set up for the game. Uh, given the fact that Tyrone played nearly the guts of 35 minutes, a man down and only get bit by two points, I think they might actually come away the happier in the long term. Uh, I know that they all have earlier rounds to play in the championship but it could be set up for a potential Trone v Donegal semi-final and if that is the case I think that Trone will have learned more from the game fire into the fact that they found a debutant who was fit to score 10 points on his debut it's a big fill up for them someone who can kick off right foot left foot it's a right foot free taker who Trone have traditionally struggled with over the last few years as well so even though they get beat I think Trone might come away the happier now, it does leave them under a bit of pressure going into the Armagh game this weekend, but I think it's pressure that those Trone players will be well used to, backs against the wall, so it'll be an interesting game with them or Armagh come Saturday because should Trone lose two in a row, it will put them under severe pressure of dropping out of the division. OK, so just finally, um, was there any other games that stood out for you at the weekend? Obviously, I, I watched the Derry game on GA Go and I have to say that while I knew that they were probably favourites. I didn't expect them to come away with a 16-point victory. Uh, 21-5 is big scoring against a Longford team that I know they beat them in the league last October when the league finished. But it's a place that Derry have traditionally has struggled a bit. Uh, Derry got a good spread of scorers. But watching it on TV, one thing that was noticeable was that Derry physically looked a lot stronger than their opponents. And the more they get training, the more games they get under their belt the next couple of weeks... I think that'll stand to them and they've probably given themselves a real good foothold going into the weekend now where they play Fermanagh. Fermanagh themselves had a brilliant victory over Cavan. Uh, it was hard to know what way the two Ulster teams would face off against each other. Cavan obviously in the high of the Ulster victory from last November but Fermanagh with Quigley returning kicking not nine just seemed to pull away at the end, I think Cavan will be very disappointed in that, that they let the lead slip and that they're now putting themselves under a bit of pressure going into the Longford game. Because in that division, if you lose two games, there's a fair chance you'll go down. So I'm sure that uh, Mickey Graham doesn't want to be formed two divisions inside two seasons, regardless of being the Ulster holders. 
looking at the other big fixtures involving Ulster teams, the Antrim game was obviously one of note, given they had a new management that they're playing Louth, who have Mickey Hart in tow, but it seemed a very good free-flowing game of football, very open, probably not the style that most Division 4 teams are used to, uh, but Antrim kicked the last three scores, and they seem to pull away again. That will give them a massive shot in the arm going to their game this weekend. That it gives them the confidence that they can push on now from it. And finally, looking at the down game, I think down will be very disappointed. Now, Mayo will be classed as a top four or five team. It's strange that they're playing Division 2, but given that down will only get three games before they look into their playoff in the division, they wouldn't have wanted to not only get beat, but I think it's the manner of the defeat. Uh, a 10 11 point defeat in that division is hard, especially when you're away from home. And I think Down will have to dust themselves off. About three or four weeks ago, I had looked at Down maybe to maybe pip Donegal because they have them at home. But going on the weekend's performance, that they'll have a lot of work to do and a lot of growing to make up in the preliminary round of Ulster to do so. Okay, thanks, Jared. Thanks for that. Okay, that's our show for this week. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks to our guests for uh, taking part um, and hope to see you for the next show. And be sure to subscribe to Gaelic Life for all your GA news from Ulster. Uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.